Then Vishnath, he, he concludes this uh, whole thing with some dialogue that they say, the internal meaning, which is what is Krishna is saying, O gopis, the all-pervading moonlight has created a serene and peaceful atmosphere in the forest, devoid of fear. There are only peaceful creatures here, such as deer, agora sapte, and the ferocious beasts like tigers and bears are harmless because of Braja's naturally non-violent atmosphere. Consequently, this night should not frighten you. So the Sanskrit taken, as I said, instead of gora becomes agora, then instead of becoming fearful and frightening, it becomes peaceful and fearless. Hence, you should uh, not frighten you. Don't be afraid that your husbands or other relatives may come looking for you. Fearing those dangerous animals, they will definitely not come near this place. So don't go back to Brudge. There's no reason to go there. Your husbands, no one will come look for you. Stay here in my company. So then, Vishnu says, the gopis now, he imagines or he, he sees in his sporty, this pastime, then the gopis say, okay, you're telling us to stay here, but do you tell any kind of woman to stay with you? You meet any woman in the dead of night, you say, oh, don't go, stay. And then the gopis ask, will you keep any type of woman with you? And Krishna says, no, no, I'm very selective, I'm very particular. I'll only keep women like you, who are young and beautiful with slender waist. You, you should stay here with me, not any other type of women. So Vishnu. Thus, by reading, he says, he concludes, reading the Sanskrit words differently, one can see that Krishna's words are full of considerate as well as neglectful statements. In this wonderful exchange of love, Krishna simultaneously teases and enchants the gopis with his clever words. So this verse, read the translation again, he said, the night, oh, gopis, the night is quite frightening, and frightening creatures are lurking, lurking about Slender-waisted girls, please, this is not the proper place for women like you. Please return to Braj. So he's increasing their attachment, their thirst for love, and his own also. And this is his nature. And then we can go on to the next verse. But the, in one sense, he's trying to appeal to them, as I mentioned, out of fear and safety. And these are some, these are, you can say, looking from our, uh, level, let's say, of sadhakas. Fear and safety are two very major concerns of ours. Security. Security and fear. And Krishna is showing in this example the gopis that they are, they are really fearless and don't care for any security. Because he's saying, go home. Please return home. Brajan pratiyata. That means go to a secure place. Go to a safe place. And then he says, and this is a fearful place. And this is exactly what people try to tell you when you approach God or you, you try to give up your life to serve God. They say, oh, come home, this is secure. What about your future? What will happen if you surrender everything to God? Aren't you concerned about your security? Aren't you afraid? This is how people preach or try to bring people, bring devotees away from Krishna consciousness in the very beginning. And these types of qualities are actually always carried by a devotee till he surrenders fear, attachment to security and fear of the future. And this, is, this prevents one from sharanagati. Depending on Krishna as my maintainer, the sixth sentence of surrender. Surrender means that Krishna will maintain me. He'll do everything. I, I just serve him. But do we really believe that? Look at the gopis. <laughs> Look at the situation. Such a fearful situation. Un insecure, insecure situation. In the middle of the forest, there are no walls. There's no roof. There are no doors. There's no boundary wall. Look at all this whole secure, safe situation. We have doors and locks and bolts. So they're there. The directions are the walls. And the sky is their roof. But they have Krishna. And that's all one needs. So by, we can see, we can draw some idea from this that how these tender, it says these slender-waisted girls, so madhyama, so tender, so young, Really, it says in other commentaries, some of these sadhana siddha gopis are seven years old. And Krishna's eight. 
course they mature and all these things, but so that they're young, they're tender, they're innocent. Usually a 10-year-old boy or an 8 or 9-year-old girl is not particularly fearless. <laughs> they're very nervous and anxious about their safety and fear. So Krishna is trying to say, aren't you, don't you feel insecure? Don't you want to run home to your security of your house and surroundings? And aren't you fearful for your body and your existence? Gopis aren't, aren't moving one millimeter. They're not moving. They're not even, their, eye, their eyebrows aren't even raising it. It's said they're only looking at each other with sidelong glances. Like, this is interesting. But when someone's fearful, if you're speaking to someone to create fear, then you see the response in that person's face that they're becoming fearful. Oh, really? Yeah. If you go, if you go there, there's this thing and that thing and that, it'll catch you. Oh, really? Oh, that. But the gopis are just, they're not, they're not changing their look. They're just looking full of eagerness and full of surprise and astonishment, just full of love. <coughs> because this is the depth and in, in when their love is so deep by the gopis, nothing can change it. And we were, this is the definition of prema we were hearing yesterday. No matter what Krishna does, whether he leaves them, or embraces them, or tramples them, or is indifferent to them, or goes with some other sakhi, or comes late, or has obvious signs of enjoying another, and comes right in front of Radharani, without any shame, shamelessly, this uh, bold one, their love never diminishes. But we see, if we become, if there's some question about our security, about our safety, then how, how is our bhakti, how does it diminish? It may <coughs> diminish somewhat. So this is one we can see, we can learn something from this, uh, from our, to take into our own lives. How that if Krishna is before us, if we really feel the presence of Krishna before us, and we should never be concerned or worried about personal security, home, hearth or home, or have any fear of anything. This is the sign of true bhakti. If bhakti is there, there's no fear because one is always in the presence of the beloved, surrounded by Krishna everywhere, and they don't move. You look this way, that way, but Krishna is always in front of you. <coughs> 